The number one thing you got to be is you got to be open. You got to be open. You got to have ears. Even the greatest of kings was not the greatest of kings because they were just so rigid. The greatest of kings understood where to put people at in order to be successful. And he understood that it wasn't that he was the smartest. It was that he was the most open to hearing what everybody else had to say so that he can make an informed decision. The greatest CEOs is not the smartest people in the room. They're not the greatest engineers. They're not the greatest salespeople. They're none of that. Their talent is in observing and hearing and understanding that there's other people that have talent in the room that may be smarter in their respective fields. And it's your job to observe and then make an informed decision that's going to be best for the group. It's to be like water. It's to be open. It's to hear. It's to put people in a position of power. It's to find out what makes them great and give it to them. It's sometimes being uh, a disciplinarian because you're doing it out of love. Sometimes people need to be pushed, but if you don't understand them, even the word itself says in everything you get, get understanding. If you don't understand them, if you're not observing them, if you're not paying attention to them, you can't just come into a relationship, think that you're just going to go to work, come home, get some pussy, and that's going to be the end of the conversation. You're going to be broke up in two years. Two years, max. And sometimes y'all still together, but y'all already broke up because you mentally checked out, they mentally checked out, and y'all just like ships in the night. And that's why I say that it's a difference between being successfully married and just being married. Because the time that y'all have, that could be like a prison sentence. Or, or it could be a badge. It can be achievement. Time works both ways. It goes both ways. It goes both ways. Some people doing their time and they can't wait for it to be over. That's called a prison sentence. That's similar to you going to prison. You just doing time every single day. You with each other because you've been with each other. That's just what you're used to. And sometimes you get so used to it, you then get institutionalized. And some people are in their relationships institutionalized. And so being married for a long time by itself on the surface is not just the way in which you substantiate whether or not somebody is built to give you advice. And then other people, they do it as an achievement. That's the good side of it. That means that they continue to grow. They continue to grow. They continue to blossom. They continue to evolve. They continue to become greater, right? They're growing together, interconnected. I'm pulling you, you pulling me, and we making sure that as we grow together, neither one of us is going to the left or to the right too much because if you go too much to the right, then you're going to grow out of pocket. You're going to grow crooked. It's a yin and a yang. And in order for you to be that, you're going to have to do the same thing that you would have to be in order to be a CEO of a company. You're going to have to be rigid sometimes. And you're going to have to have compassion sometimes. And you're going to have to be able to listen sometimes. And then you're going to have to talk sometimes. It's being fluid. The application of it is being a great leader. Leadership qualities extend to every area of your life. And that's why when we do coaching calls, we don't do coaching calls just in money. Or just in business, because who you are across the board, even from a character perspective, is going to feed in how successful you are in corporate America. The same method that it takes to be great in corporate is the same method it takes in order to be great in your relationship. And you know what's so interesting about that is I see people put more time, more effort into being great into their corporate mindset and all of that type of stuff. And they can't bring none of it home. They cut it off when they leave the job. And when they get home, they become a completely different person. They code switch. But the person at your job is who you really are. And we think that the code switch is who we really are. Because you got to try to be ghetto. Because you spend a majority of your time in corporate. That's who you really are. You not the person that you are at home. That's not the real you. The real you is the person that turned it on when you got to work because that's the part where you thrive. That's the thing that you're doing. That's why you're so, so much more submissive to your boss, not because they signing your paycheck, 
but because you understand that they gave you a vision, leadership. Women want to be led. That's why they're so loyal to their fucking bosses. Listen, it's secretaries that go to the different jobs, depending, it's executive secretaries that go to the different jobs, depending on where it is that that guy go. That guy can switch a whole nother company and he'll say, you know what? I'm going to take my wife. With, I'm sorry, not my wife. I'm going to take my executive secretary. The executive secretary know your husband more than his wife. Because who you are at work is who you really are. You missing it. The executive secretary knows your husband better than you do. That's his real wife. <laughs> who you are in the spaces that you spend the majority of your time is who you really are. And then that's who you're doing your time with. This is who you're spending your time with and that's who you're doing your time with. Because you can't wait to get back to work. You can't wait to get back to work. Think about it. At what point in the day do you put on the mask? You're not putting it on for work. You're putting it on for when you get home. Mmm. Mmm. Come on, man. Let's talk about it. So when you're talking about application, ask yourself, why are you so much more successful at work than you are at home? And if you put the same amount of energy or even a fraction of it into what you got going on at home, how much more fruitful would it be? You at work, killing it, raises, promotions, loved, adored, and then you, you hate it in your own household. Why? Why? Come on, man. Listen, y'all tune into this shit every single Wednesday. Every Wednesday you come up here, I don't have no clue what I'm going to talk about. We start to mine this stuff out. We start to get into the thick of things. Come on. Think about this for a minute. Let's put it together. We free thinkers over here. Why are you so much more successful at work than you are when you get home? And don't say it's because they don't appreciate you. Because a leader is leader anywhere they go. I'm great everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, I'm great. It's a fact, though. Why are you not, or why are you, you minimally great at home, but you awesome at work? Everybody love you. You a whole other person at work. So much so, you don't even want to take your chick to the, to the Christmas party. Because then they gonna, she going to see who you really are. She don't know you. She don't know you. Because who you are at work is the real you. And you cut that off when you get home. 